this balloon dog and this balloon dog were created at the exact same time and day in the exact same way. But one looks like you'd expect after two and a half weeks, a little bit shriveled, starting to unwind. And this one looks almost like I just made it. How did I do this? I'm about to show you, so stay tuned to find out. The balloon artists have been asking themselves for decades. How can I make my balloon animals last longer? Well, look at this. <laughs> Same exact creation date of two and a half weeks ago. I made these guys at the same time, right before my parents came to town on March 18th. So I probably made them on March 17th. I didn't write it down because I'm not good at experiments, documenting things, but <laughs> after I made these, I threw them in the closet and kind of forgot about them. <laughs> but my parents were here for their visit and since, um, but I just checked on them and, and holy cow, what a difference. This one, it even feels firm and everything still almost just like I created it today. This one, I've seen this a million times. I know this balloon is on its way out. He was cute and it was fun while it lasted, but it's not, we're not gonna be able to save this guy. So how did I do this? I saw a great tip on the cute corner convention, which you should definitely go check out. There are, I don't, hundreds of hours of balloon education for free online on YouTube. And I'm not only telling you that because I was an instructor on there, but there are loads of other amazing instructors. And this was a gem. There is a ton of gold you can get from sifting through those videos. So definitely check them out. But I believe I was watching Sue Baller when she just like offhandedly mentioned this tip. And I was like, hold up, what? <laughs> say that again so um i've never tried this and i cannot believe it but i'm always learning new things and that's a good thing all right so how did i do this sue's little tip was this guy which i've known about for years it's high float decorators love it people that want their round balloons to last a long time and stay floating with helium in them for a long time have used this for years um, I've always kind of stayed away from it in the twisting world and even with my round balloons because, well, if you're not using helium, you don't really need it. Round balloons will stay inflated pretty long without it. Um, and it can be kind of messy if it pops in the process of creating whatever you're making until it dries. But how this works is it creates a coating on the inside of your balloon. And when it dries, the coating is impermeable, pretty much, I guess. I mean, obviously. <laughs> so the air will not escape your balloon. As you may not know, latex is actually a porous material. And over time, the air molecules, which are smaller than the holes in the latex, will escape and seep out. And that's why your balloon will shrivel up and shrink. This will create a coating around the inside of your balloon that blocks the air from leaving so it can't escape and your balloons last a much longer time. I mean, this guy is two and a half weeks old. I think I'm going to just keep him, throw him back in the closet and check on him in another two weeks and see if he's changed at all. <laughs> we'll just keep this experiment going. Um, but before this, you may have seen the video of my three-year-old balloon creation. And the way that I kept that balloon for three years was by throwing it in my freezer. And unfortunately, we recently did remove it from the freezer. Um, and so he's no longer with us. But that balloon did last three years. Downside is you have to keep it in the freezer. That's not great for gifting to people, right? This opens up a whole new world of opportunities, especially in the post-COVID age. Most businesses that are still doing well these days have evolved. They have added 
or pivoted services, even your grocery store, even your restaurants in your local area, if they're still doing well, it's because they've changed their business dramatically. Most have added delivery options or pickup or we'll shop for you type stuff. Um, and so our businesses, I mean, all businesses really will need to adapt to this in some way or another. So why is this great? I see shipping opportunities with this. I see better delivery opportunities with your balloons lasting a long time. Also, this is great because you can make a lot of stuff in advance, like a week or two in advance, and it still looks like it did the day you made it. So. How do you do this? Let's do a quick demo so I can show you how I did it. I am not a high float expert. I am very much a newbie, but this is what happened on one of my first tries. So like that first time, you can do it too and get really good at it. So this is what the bottle's gonna look like. This is the mini bottle, okay? Don't think that you need to spend a lot of money on this. I've seen this at Walmart for at least a year or two. So these are very much like mainstream now, these little mini packages of high float. They normally come in much bigger bottles, but get the mini ones that you can find at Walmart or whatever the similar Walmart is where you live <laughs> and get this little, little one. It is uh, five ounces if you need the exact size there. Um, so what you're gonna do is just take your 260. I have not tried this 350s or 160s. That would be kind of scary. Uh, once you get the top on and get it assembled, if you have some trouble with doing that, the package does come with some really nice instructions that tell you how to attach the top, the little pumper top onto the top of the bottle. So read the directions. <laughs> I think I'm going to start off with a clear 260. You probably won't be able to see much, but just in case, um, just, you know, the liquid is clear, but maybe you'll be able to see something. I haven't tried it with a clear, so let's see what happens. What I did, this 260 will fit onto the, pump, the nozzle thing of your um, high float pump just perfectly. So it just slides on there, and I really wanted to get it at least into the middle of the balloon so I can spread it all over. Um, it's kind of, it feels like a gel. So it's not really like liquid liquid, it's kind of like a jelly sort of liquid. All right, so I'm just scooting the balloon down onto the nozzle there. All right, and I'm just gonna do one, like half of a pump, not even a full pump. All right, so you, I don't know how well you can see that, but we've got a little bit of that liquid stuff in there. And now we're gonna carefully slide my balloon off. All right, so now we have our 260 with the high flow inside of it. And this is kind of cool with the clear because at least you can see where it is distributed. So I'm just going to rub it around my 260 to try to get it all the way down into the tail and I'm pinching off up here so it doesn't come out um, or get too high up in the neck because if it's like too high up here when you go to tie it, you might get some on your fingers and that's not the most pleasant thing, but all right, trying to get it down into the end of the tail. There's some air in the end there, so it's like, there we go. Try to get the air out of there and now it'll go to the end pretty easily. So this is cool. You can really see where it's at with the clear balloon. Just want to make sure I get that little end tip. Gotcha. Ha ha ha. No air will ever escape this balloon. All right. So what am I going to make with a clear balloon? I don't know. I was thinking like a, a flower or something. So let's try that. All right. So now that I've got it all spread around my 260, I'm going to inflate this. We'll see what it looks like through the clear balloon. So just inflate like normal. Just a little air out there. All right. Now, as I'm looking through here, it kind of looks like I didn't get enough in the beginning of my balloon, but you can see where it does start down here. There's some bubbles and it just looks a little wet on the inside and that's good. 
So what I'm gonna do is do a better job on getting it up in the neck. But I'm actually just gonna pinch off the air from the front of the balloon and tie it right where that high flow starts and do a better job getting it higher up in the neck next time. Okay, <laughs> so now we have a very short balloon to work with. That's okay. We can make something small, like we'll do like a little, um, just do a little bracelet. So as you're twisting, there's really no change to twisting technique, although you might wanna be a little bit careful because if it does pop, it can kind of shoot this liquidy gel stuff in every direction. So maybe be a little bit more careful. Um, and you probably don't want to try to twist it after it dries. So I'm, I'm not, I don't know that for sure, but I'm just assuming you want to do this twisting while it's wet on the inside and then let it dry. And then once it's dry, if something pops, it's not gonna make a huge mess, all right? So you really can't see any noticeable difference, really, from a regular balloon. I'm just gonna tie this off here. And now I have not done this before. I've gotten rid of an end with the high float in it. So I'm not sure how sticky, messy this is going to be. <laughs> What I think I'm gonna do, instead of, well, I'm not sure if I should break it with my hands like I normally do, if I should just carefully cut it out here at the end. Decisions, decisions. I guess we'll see how normally you can twist with the high float in it. So I will use my hands to break it and we'll just see how messy it is. <laughs> like, I didn't think this through because with the dog, I didn't have to break anything. So what I'm going to do, I can really see it when I squish it in there. See my fingerprints on the inside of the balloon, that's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to pinch it really well. Pinch it really well. And then, that's it. Okay, so I've got it ripped. No mess yet. I'm letting the air out slowly. Okay, really not too bad. All right, it is on my fingers a little bit, but... I expected that. All right, so I'm going to just tie this knot real quick. It is a little slippery because my fingers got it on there. Ta -da! But I did it. Okay, so you just try that really quick. <laughs> we can peel it off later. <laughs> Maybe have like a wet towel handy or something while you're doing this. So you can just wipe it off if it does get on your fingers and then continue on with your creation. So really, it wasn't bad though. If you're careful, that was not bad. So I think that's totally doable. Let me just cut off that. Okay, so now I have a little, little bracelet. Ta -da! And this will last probably a really long time. So I'm gonna put it back in the closet with our little balloon dog. I feel like we should give him a name since he's sticking around so long. <laughs> And we'll see how long my clear bracelet lasts. Clear is especially like, seems like it deflates a lot faster than even the other colors. So this will be fun to see if it stays nice and bubbly. The other fun thing about high float and clear balloons in particular is that they will keep this clear glossy look to them instead of getting clouded over like clear balloons usually do as they start to degrade. Um, so that's kind of cool. I wouldn't do this, okay, I would not do this at an event in front of people. I wouldn't do this in a line work situation, absolutely. But if you have started changing your business, like I hope you have to stay in business in this brave new world that we find ourselves in, you might wanna start thinking about more delivery options and even shipping options, okay? So I have, since I started twisting balloons, I've been like, how can I mail these to people? I want to be able to ship them, but they deflate too quickly. Sometimes shipping takes a week and things will already have shriveled up by then or started to untwist or they just don't look as nice after a week. Um, and how can I ensure that they're not going to pop uh, in transit? So I, I'm not, I don't want to say this will prevent it from popping because um, it's a balloon still. We can't guarantee that it won't pop, but it will arrive if it doesn't pop 
looking really nice, almost like you just made it. So this opens up new opportunities. Get yourself a Shopify website. Start shipping balloons, people. I want to see balloons in the mail. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> But really, I am I am excited about the opportunities. So this would be something that you would do in your, your home, your studio, wherever you work. Just do it privately. Make sure that this dries before you ship it off so that if it does pop, it makes a mess in your work area and not in the box or in your customer's home. Um, I am not sure actually off the top of my head here how long it takes to dry. I don't believe it's that long, you know, maybe an hour or two. I am not the expert here, but once it's dry, I would feel safe putting it in a box and shipping it to somebody. Try it. I know most of us have some friends or relatives who are living in other states or cities right now that we're not able to see so often um try it ship something to your family today that you created and see how it goes you know they're the best people to experiment and, and start seeing how something will work with i've shipped balloons in the mail before um before i did this high flow trick but they were like big hard things so they arrived okay but this makes me want to ship a lot more balloons to my family and just because then you can call them up and be like hey how was it when it arrived does it look okay and if you had bought this would you be happy and so you know trying things out with your family and friends people that you can call up afterwards and get like an honest like hey send me a picture what did it look like when it arrived that's a great little experiment that you can do if you are thinking about getting into this and using high float to help you pivot your business into creating more income streams since a lot of our typical income streams are either dried up or very slow right now so i want to give you guys some ideas and i hope this inspires you and i hope you'll try it and comment down below let me know if you've ever used high float in a 260 and if you just did a simple creation or if you've used it with more advanced creations if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a big giant thumbs up <laughs> really helps me out here on youtube and if you have any suggestions or other ideas of videos you want to see me make leave those in the comments as well so i just created another dog <laughs> after i finished filming because i wanted to try again with getting it in the 260 and get better up into the nozzle, which I did. So this one, I didn't have to cut off the front. Probably should have filmed it that way better. But um, so I wanted to experiment with cutting the ends. So if you need to cut, how messy is that gonna be? So I ripped it with the little bracelet. And so now I'm going to try cutting this little end part of the balloon and just see kind of what happens here. This. This tail is pretty full of high float. I put a little bit more in it this time, but I'm just gonna see, let's say I wanted to just trim off his tail here. So you're just gonna give him a little short fat tail and I wanted to get rid of the rest of this. I'm definitely gonna try to cut the smallest hole that I can out here at the very end of this. And it's probably going to be a little messy, but oh, it wasn't, not bad at all. Okay, so now when we tie this, stuff's probably gonna wanna come out. So what I'm gonna do is just take a tissue or like a wet paper towel would probably even be better. And I'm just gonna pinch that tail. And as I pinch, I'm gonna pull and slide to try to get all that, any high float in there out before I tie it. Okay, so there's some high float in, boogers in this tissue. <laughs> But now there's not really too much in here, so at least we can tie this, and it's not getting on my fingers this way. So that works pretty well. Just make sure you pull your knot nice and tight, because if you don't, it'll probably untie itself, because it's, you know, the inside of the balloon is still a little bit slippery while that high float is wet. Okay, so I think that's a good way to if you need to make a cut and get rid of the end part of your balloon that really was not too messy just have some tissues around and be ready um, when you make any cuts like that the other experiment i was thinking about trying was cutting open this guy and seeing what it's like now i mean it's been dry for two and a half weeks 
Um, I believe it's only been like 10 minutes and I, I think the high flow in this bracelet is already dry as well. So it does seem to dry really fast, so cool. Um, and I just wanna, I don't know if I should put him back in the closet to see how long he lasts or if we should cut him open. Oh, what do you think? Tell me in the comments. Um, I think I'm gonna cut it. I don't know, should I? I feel so bad. <laughs> I have like an emotional attachment to this guy and he's not even a good balloon dog. His tail is way too long. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just want to see what it's like on the inside. I'm so curious. Why don't we just give him a tail trim and then we can look at the inside of this part. How about that? That way we can keep him. All right, so cut the air out of there. Ooh, the balloon has a very fun texture when you cut it with the high flow in there, like it's like a worm. <laughs> if there's any decor pros watching this, they're probably like, Holly's such a noob. I know, I know, it's okay. <laughs> All right, so it definitely feels funny when it's uh, deflated with the dry high flow in there, but let's just cut this guy in half. I can't even get my scissors in there. Okay, so I have cut it in half. It's kind of, it's really wanting to curl up, so it's gonna be hard to show. You can kind of see a bunch of the high flow is bunched up right here. And then you can feel the inside of the balloon. It, it does feel like it has, it's, it feels like a little bit oily. So it does have a coating that is stayed on the whole part of the balloon and then this little bunched up stuff is a lot like like dried glue or something kind of plasticky. Um, definitely one of those things that I think would be fun to pick at and play with. So there is some of that high float that I pulled off of there. So it is actually a little bit, um, it's still tacky. You know, it's not gonna shoot everywhere if, you, if it pops. But it definitely has some tacky residue even after two and a half weeks. That stuff is staying, doing its job. So I'm pretty sure this guy is going to continue lasting for a really long time. So we're going to throw both of these in the closet now. And maybe I'll write the date on them this time and be like more like a proper experiment. And we'll see how long this guy lasts and how long this guy lasts when they're created two and a half weeks apart from each other. So it'll be an ongoing experiment. I'll keep you guys updated. Make sure to follow my Facebook page for updates on um, quartz and ruby. <laughs> How about that? All right. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great week. Bye, everybody.